you will use the snaps, whether you like it or not. Over the past few years, Canonical and its project Ubuntu have been going very hard trying to push Snap adoption, converting old packages that previously were a deb into a Snap instead. Some of those projects are long complete, most notably things like Firefox. Some of them are a very, very long work in progress, like the Steam Snap. And some of the projects out there aren't directly user-facing applications in this way. Some of them are more lower level system things like CUPS, or its full name, the Common Unix Printing System. For once, it's not recursive, and for once, it's actually a good name. Since all the way back in 2021, Canonical's been working on switching up the old dev package for the new and shiny Snap package. Now, the reason it's taken so long is whilst the package mostly works like the user would expect it to, there are a lot of features that are missing and the tooling surrounding it hasn't exactly been in a state that's useful. For a while, there wasn't configuration tooling, so if you wanted to go and configure which printers were being used, you would need to do it through the web interface. Now, my favourite part of the initiative is it's not just some weird thing being developed by Canonical with no input from the outside. No, the guy running the initiative is Till Campeter. Now, this isn't just some random canonical developer. You see the logo they have here? This guy is the head of Open Printing, the organization that manages the Linux version of Cups. And after two very long years, we're almost there. Nevertheless, we will all continue working on the new architecture, the printer and scanner applications, the snaps, and I will switch Ubuntu 23.10 Mantic Minotaur as planned to use the CUPS snap as its printing system and the printer application snaps as drivers for non-IPP driverless printers. 23.10 was supposed to be the time the switch fully happened. I say supposed to, so you can probably guess where we're going. Up until the start of this month, August 2023, everything seemed like it was going relatively fine. It seemed like the project was coming along and it was going to be done in time. The problem is they still had a little bit more work than they initially intended. Features were being added, bugs were being dealt with, testing was being done, all of the stuff you would generally expect to see. The switch over to the cup snap on Ubuntu 23.10 is still under development and some parts are still missing. Especially, and this is not an exhaustive list, GNOME Control Center needs to be modified to support cups in a snap, System Config Printer does not work anymore with CUPS in a snap. Existing print queues of a classic CUPS installation will not get migrated to the CUPS snap. Printer-Driver- are not supported anymore and will get removed. Printer application snaps replace the drivers. They are emulations of driverless IPP printers, which is an internet protocol printer, and have web admin interfaces on these domains here, which can get accessed with a web browser. They will also be listed in the printers module of GNOME Control Center once the module has been updated. These web interfaces are currently the only way to set up printers which need a driver. In the web interface, use add printer in the upper right to create a print queue. This is as of 23 days ago, August 6th. Now Ubuntu has this really annoying thing called a schedule. Now a schedule is when you have dates for when things need to get done by. And on August 17th, there is the feature freeze. Now the feature freeze is this really annoying period when no new features can be added. At this point, you're focusing on bug fixes and things like that. And there's a bunch of features that still need to be worked on. And this was 11 days before the feature freeze. One very important thing is not being considered here. These are the things that need to be worked on on Ubuntu generally. Not the flavors. There are additional things that the flavors need to do, and we'll definitely get to that. Love Ubuntu or hate it, the way they do their scheduling is great. It gives the developers a lot of time to make sure things are actually stable. You focus on getting the features done early, and then do all the testing and all that stuff after that point but it does mean that you have to get things done long before the release. But surely, with 11 days left, 
everything can be completed. Surely. Now the whole not being able to configure your printer thing, that's kind of important. And not everybody wants to use a version of GNOME Control Center. For example, many flavors recommend in their seeds on System Config Printer, I presume to set up and manage printers. For example, Zubuntu. If this is going to be removed, is the only workaround for someone to point their browser to localhost 8000 or localhost 60000. This assumes end users are familiar with the web interface and how to browse them, obviously. I didn't even realize that modern printers gave you a web interface. Like, the last printer I owned, I threw out probably two or three years ago, and by that point, it was at least six or seven years old. Also, even with the GTK systems that may make use of the GNOME Control Center, not everybody is using a modern version of it. Some people forked off a long time ago. For example, Ubuntu Budgie uses a fork of the GTK3 version as opposed to the GTK4 version. But, don't worry, Till had a solution. Firstly, replace any forks from older versions of GNOME Control Center by the current version and port any additions to that version. Keep in mind, nine days from the feature freeze. The feature freeze also applies to the flavors. The second option is create a separate printer setup tool and keep the GCC version GNOME Control Center slash fork already in use. To minimize the effort of getting this separate printer setup tool, take the current version of GNOME Control Center and skip building all of the modules but the printer module, basically having a stripped down version of GNOME Control Center that just does printing. Which, to my surprise, one of those options actually worked. Possibility 1. Afraid not, GNOME Control Center is very broken on Budgie. Plus, this doesn't help flavors, only GNOME Shell ships GNOME Control Center, and I doubt others would want to. Possibility 2. I think you're saying replace System Config Printer with something based on GNOME Control Center, but just reduced to its printer code. And this is what they got. And it did the job. Sure, hacking a new system config printer based on a trimmed out version of GNOME Control Center would probably work for flavors. Flavors obviously need to be brought into this. Keep in mind, eight days left. Then this guy came in. This is maintainer on Ubuntu Studio, and nowadays they ship KDE Plasma, and shipping GNOME Control Center is basically a non-starter on a KDE Plasma desktop. But for Edge Ubuntu, it uses whatever is provided by Ubuntu Desktop Minimal, so it's not really a concern there. That flavor would just be using GNOME. Once again, Till has a solution. For KDE slash QT based distros, as long as they do not change their printer setup tool, is there one in KDE settings app, a small separate program like we had with System Config Printer would probably be the best stopgap solution. Turns out it wasn't that big of a problem on KDE Plasma anyway, it already worked with the cup snap. The real problem is the lack of a transitional package. With Firefox for example, I know a lot of people don't like this who don't like the snap, but when you try to install Firefox with apt, it is going to install the snap instead. This is a transitional package. This makes it so there is a package in both systems, making it so that things that rely on one package but not the other don't notice there's something weird going on. Basically, it's there to make sure everything is just working like it should be. If it's not there, you start seeing some problems. The old cups.deb package and its dependencies slash recommends were completely ripped out of my system without warning. Instead of transitionally installing the cup snap to get things working again, I had to manually install the cup snap. This won't affect new installations, but upgrades will be affected. I hope this is resolved soon, otherwise we're going to get a lot of bug reports from people who don't exactly know what's going on with regards to this thread. The transitional package is high on my list, and for sure, Ubuntu 23.10 will come with it. I said earlier in this thread how this package will look like. Keep in mind, 14 days ago, three days before the feature freeze. The feature freeze is also a package addition freeze. And this is the last thing said by the Ubuntu Studio maintainer. My concern isn't that it won't happen, my concern certainly is. My concern is that we get people testing things prematurely and open bug reports and then get anxious when things don't get fixed in a timely manner and then get concerned that they won't ever be fixed. Recently I got a direct email practically scolding me for not attending to a bug that wasn't even within my purview to begin with. That was filed in May for something in Mantic. 
the distro that is not even out yet and hadn't even hit beta yet. My point is that removing cups from the desktop common seed prior to the availability of a transitional package was quite frankly premature and to use a colloquialism, putting the cart before the horse. And then the thread went silent up until five days ago when there was a bit of an update. And then Till came back. We have decided to revert to dev package based printing and move the switch over out to Ubuntu 24.10. We are already long past the feature freeze and shortly before the interface freeze and the desktop integration has taken longer than expected. I don't know why 23.10 was promised in the first place. Just don't promise a release date until things are actually done or very close to done especially also the needs of printer setup tools for the flavors need some additional time. Sure, more than a week before the due date. Also, GNOME Control Center is undergoing a major UI modernization and we need to merge with it. And for providing the common print dialog backend in Snap, the session debuff support in Snapd needs to get finally released. Since there usually aren't big high impact changes in the LTS release, they're gonna skip that one and go to 24.10. For now though, the focus is going to be on Ubuntu Core Desktop. Since everything is already a snap there anyway, it seems like the best place to focus on and make sure everything is working like it should be. Also, it doesn't have that pesky problem of flavors. You can just focus on Ubuntu GNOME and then deal with the other stuff later. This situation kind of reminds me of the student who looks at the assignment early, but doesn't actually get any of the important stuff started until like, right before the due date. Then they realize, wait, the assignment's actually a lot bigger than I thought it was. Let's just fail the assignment. Just don't submit anything. Too much work. And maybe this is entering conspiracy territory, but I saw this great comment over on Reddit. I'm glad they decided to postpone. Canonical has made the mistake of releasing snaps to the public before they're ready. They did it with the Firefox snap, which only just recently is starting to get actually good when it had egregious launch times and no native messaging support. They did it with the Steam snap, which still has some major issues. At this point, it feels like self-sabotage. Look, maybe there's some 4D chess here and some people at Canonical just hate snaps and are trying to destroy them, but I think that's too good to be true. So let me know what you think about a cup snap. Do you care? Do you just want it to work? Is this the final straw that's gonna make you leave Ubuntu? Or do you just run snaps for everything? I would love to know. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And if you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really liked the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe, silly bear pay linked in the description down below. That's gonna be it for me, and look up on YouTube why Printer Inc. is a scam.